Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the update preview stream. This is Bugs here. I'm joined today by Artemis and Miss D. Say hi, guys. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. So we're over here on the staging branch. And if I sound a little different today, it is because I am on the road traveling, actually. So uh, it's probably going to be a shorter one as well. But uh, pardon any differences in the audio. But anyway, let's get into it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to do at Miss D underscore that's me in chat. And we'll get to as many questions as we have the opportunity to. Also, if you're wondering about Rustified Server Wipes, well, it is the weekly Thursday wipe servers wipe in today. And so that's your mains, your smalls, your minis, and the like. And they're wiping at regular scheduled time, which is 3 p.m. local time for the region. That means EU wiped three hours ago. AU and SEA wiped like 12, 13 hours ago because they live in the future. And U.S. servers will wipe in two hours at 3 p.m. EST. And yeah, no blueprint wipes or anything. We're mid-month. The other thing about this month is there is a five- Thursday month this month. And so next week, the bi-weeklies will actually wipe again. And we will have just a one-week wipe cycle for the bi-weeklies as we head into September. And the update, of course, and forced wipe is going to be September 5th, so two weeks from today. So that is what's going on with wipe. Now, as I said, we're over here on the staging branch. This is the normal staging branch. And we're seeing a couple new things, kind of building on what we were showing off last week, if you tuned in last week. First and foremost, we have a bunch more wallpaper. And if you missed it, wallpaper is a new default blueprint item probably coming in September. And it's only 20 cloth to craft. And it goes on the inside walls of your base and last week we could only show off like one or two colors this week they have added a whole bunch of new wallpapers into the mix there's wainscoting there's like clouds there's different various patterns and everything and it's really cool to see what they are adding in terms of this wallpaper there's even some glowing ones which are pretty cool now, at the moment, it's unclear as to how many of these will be available to everybody or which ones of these might be a DLC or available for purchase on the item store. But, man, I think it's so cool that they are adding this. It's, it's a little thing, right? But it's going to completely change the interior vibes of bases and everything like that. And I also really hope they open this up for community uh, creations and just like we have community skins that go for sale on the item store each week I would love to see community wallpapers go for sale and really have just a great variety of different options for interior base decoration how many uh, imagine how many options we would have like all the artists painting and all that stuff that would be amazing to see yeah, seriously. And and like really the possibilities are endless with this. And you can see you can craft, again, it's a default blueprint, 20 cloth. You can craft it with the specific skin applied or you can grab your spray paint can and change it on the fly. And so yeah, overall a really cool new addition. Again, I don't think all of these are gonna be available for everybody from the get-go i think maybe we'll have like a couple colors that are kind of more rustic and default like the green on the top you can see and the blue and maybe the red and yellow will be default ones and then the wainscoting and the various other ones might be available for you know purchase but also the glowing ones how cool is that as well like so you could have the interior of your base like hallways glowing and everything going down the side i mean just a really cool, I'm kind of, I know it's a, a dumb little thing, but I'm kind of geeking out at it. I, I think I love these wallpapers, especially um, as we're seeing like more of them come in. I think this is just such a cool addition to the game. So 
And again, it looks like, given they're on staging now, it looks like they'll likely be available for the September 5th update and Force Wipe two weeks from today. So we'll, of course, have more information for you on that as we get closer. But I wouldn't be shocked if we see either a wallpaper DLC or if we see you know, just some individual wallpapers available on the item store in the very near future. And again, fingers crossed that they open this up for uh, community creations with this because, man, the possibilities really are endless with this. So that's cool stuff, and that's wallpaper. Now, also, we have some changes visually at least, to the digital clock. You might recall from last week, the digital clock has been added. It is a deployable digital clock. It, you can put it on the wall or whatever. And it takes just one power to power it up. And then it also has this uh, pass through. So you can set alarms, up to five alarms with it. And of course shows the in-game server time in HHMM format. And it's 24-hour format. No, sorry, uh, Americans. There's no AM, PM, 12-hour uh, format. But it is a really cool feature because not only can you see what time it is in the server, but then you can set these alarms and actually set electronic pass-throughs to say, hey, I want my electric furnace to turn on at this time, or I want this door to open at this time, or I want this light to turn on at this time, or whatever. And you can also set it, uh, the alarms up to lights or anything like that, even like boom boxes. You can have music start playing at 6 a.m. Like the possibilities are, are broad with this one. And really the functionality in the past week hasn't shifted. It was pretty solid last week, and I don't think there's much more functionality needed. However, uh, we are seeing the actual design of it get uh, completely flushed out here. And hold on one second. Sorry, I had someone come to my door at the hotel. Uh, apparently, do not disturb signs can be ignored easily. But anyway, um, pardon that interruption. But yeah, we've got a cool design. It's like saying Digimaster on it, and uh, it's got kind of a rust-centric look and all that stuff. So that's the digital clock. And are we still seeing the crafting cost of that just being uh, 100 metal frags and a level two workbench required? Let's check. Level two, yeah. 100 metal frags, level two workbench. Cool. So yeah, it's going to be pretty easy to craft. It's not a default blueprint, but uh, pretty easy to unlock. And then 100 metal frags and one power, and you got yourself a digital alarm clock, which is great. Now next in things going on, and now I don't think this is going to be coming for the September update, but there's some really interesting stuff going on with the Wolf AI. And they're really overhauling this. I think it's actually going to be a broader project where they're going to be overhauling most of the animal AI, but they're starting with the wolves and doing some really cool stuff with the AI and the behavior of wolves. Now, all this is still on a separate branch, and so we can't really show it off, but based on commits, we're seeing some pretty cool stuff. So Wolf's eyes are going to glow ominously in the dark, and so you'll be able to see like a pack of wolves looking at you in the distance kind of thing. And they're doing just more natural hunting behaviors where they'll kind of see some prey and circle around it, prey being your ass, <laughs> you, you in game. And uh, it'll see you and kind of circle around and everything. And they're also reacting dynamically to light. So like torches and campfires are going to kind of scare them away. But also if you sneak up on a wolf, like say you're, you're stalking a wolf and you hit it with an arrow, it will kind of retreat temporarily and then howl and summon its pack to regroup and then come attack you. So some really interesting stuff going on with this. And also on top of that, the spawning of wolves is now going to be spawning in packs. So I believe it's going to be like packs of three or four wolves will spawn together and 
start hunting around and prowling around. So I think wolves are going to be not only just more dynamic and interesting, but they will be more difficult probably to, uh, as an adversary is concerned. So again, not sure when this is coming in. I feel like potentially it could come in for the October update and the world update, which I'll get into momentarily. But I do not think September we're going to see this Wolf AI go live because it is just a, a broad amount of things they're working on. And I imagine they're going to want to test it thoroughly before sending out it out into the wild, so to speak. Now, speaking of the world update, over on Aux 2, which is unavailable for people to uh, play yet, and so no visuals on this yet, but work continues on just really changing up the procedural map generation as a whole. As you might recall from last week, there's just the new Radtown monument, there's oasises, there's lakes and deep canyons being added. There's also the uh, water activities like dive sites and things like that that are being added. But then on top of that, this week, what we're seeing actually is the initial works on river systems. So it looks like on top of the oasises and lakes and canyons, there's also going to be rivers that flow through the island and everything. And they're even doing some cool stuff with the physics of the rivers where it will actually have a faster current. So if you're in a kayak or a boogie board, you'll actually be able to kayak quickly down the river or boogie board down the river, which is going to be a really cool addition. And then on top of that, they are working on this new radioactive water feature, which is going to be, I think, probably initially sourced at the Radtown Redux Monument, but it's basically going to be that there'll be sources of water that are radioactive, and if you mix that with fresh water, then it'll contaminate that fresh water. But also, more interestingly, it will be able to actually irradiate someone if you shoot them, say, with a water gun or splash them with this radioactive water. It will also kill plants as well. So if you want to, you know, I don't know, fuck up your neighbor's farm or whatever, you can grab some radioactive water and pour it all over the plants and fuck up their crop. So that's an interesting new thing coming into the game as well as part of this world update. Now, again, this world update is expected to come in the October update. So we've got a whole nother month and some before we're going to actually see this likely go live in the game. And also, again, it's on Aux 2, which at the moment, sometimes Aux 2 is available to players uh, as a whole to test. At the moment, it's still not. And so I'm thinking either in the next couple weeks, probably after the September update, or maybe even before, they'll either make Aux 2 available for players to play or they'll merge the Aux 2 stuff, this world update stuff, into normal staging for testing. And I imagine, given the amount of changes, also the, there's new cliffs and topology changes all over the place. So really, this is the biggest overhaul to procedural map generation we've seen in years. And it's really exciting. There's, again, no visuals. Some people are as I mentioned last week, like trying to hack it and you can start an aux2 server and have it generate a map and then bring it into normal staging, but the water levels aren't right. It's missing all these terrain elements and all these different assets that have been added but aren't included on normal staging yet. So really, if you see these images of like, oh, this is a new canyon or whatever on Reddit or on X, Keep in mind, that is not an accurate representation of what this is going to look like. It's kind of just a very rough estimate of what the changes are. And given it's not an accurate representation, I haven't bothered trying to post anything like that or share anything like that because I don't want to do a disservice to the developers who are working so hard on this by misrepresenting uh, what beautiful work they've got going on. So. Needless to say, in the next couple weeks, we'll probably 
be able to show this off. And you better believe as soon as either Aux2 is available or this world update stuff gets merged into normal staging, we will have a full stream on all the details of it. And I'll make sure on rustify.com to do a whole picture essay on uh, just all the different new features and what they look like and how they function. So it's all to say very exciting stuff coming for this fall with Rust and with procedurally generated maps. Now there's a, also a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff being worked on as we normally see. Um, one interesting one is a fire extinguisher is now being worked on. So we just saw this, I believe yesterday, the day before the initial stages of a fire extinguisher. And it looks like you'll be able to mount it on walls and have it in your base. So if you're getting like Molotov or something like that, uh, you can now have a fire extinguisher available, which will, well, extinguish fires, I imagine. So we're keeping a close eye on that. No visuals uh, or anything on that yet because it's all in a separate branch and the work has just begun. So we'll keep you posted. They're also doing some miscellaneous fixes and stuff. So junk piles uh, are seeing some spawning fixes to prevent them spawning underground. I'm actually excited about this one because sometimes the junk pile scientists spawn underground and they fuck up the nav mesh and it can really bomb out a server actually because I, I don't know the specifics, I'm not a developer, but it's basically like the scientist gets stuck underground and then keeps trying to like find its proper path, but it can't find it because it's not in the right place. And then it can really bring server performance down. So this little, seemingly little fix to, to junk piles could be a really great addition uh, for an improvement to server performance. So that's cool to see. They've also adjusted some reload uh, animation timings to eliminate a few dead frames before you can fire. So might be a little noticeable thing, but uh, come September, you might notice like it's just the reload stuff is just a little smoother on certain guns. They're also changing some stuff with the patrol helicopter where it will patrol at 30 meters or ground height plus 30 meters, whichever one is higher. And this is kind of to ensure the heli keeps a consistent height when patrolling. I think we're probably seeing a couple other behavioral things with the patrol helicopter as well going into the September update. So as we get closer to September 5th, I'll make sure on rustify.com to post all the main things that we're seeing there. They've done some fixes to uh, the sidecar collider. So the motorbike with the sidecar, the colliders were just off a little bit and they're cleaning that up and fixing that. And that fix also should probably come in two weeks and the September 5th update. Um, they're also doing a big scary prompt uh, when pressing the safe mode button in the options menu. So really just making sure you really, really, really want to go into safe mode because, uh, yeah, if you do that accidentally, it could reset a bunch of things and it's uh, kind of a hindrance if you were to accidentally go into safe mode. So with that, they've also added a five second delay on the button. So before you can even really say you want to go into safe mode, you got to wait five seconds so that they make sure you really read that prompt. They're also doing some more work on the Blunder Buster, which is that new upcoming weapon. It's going to be word on the street, a uh, low grade kind of single shot shotgun. So low tier, uh, high damage, low accuracy, close quarters kind of single shot shotgun is what we're seeing with that. No word on when that's going to go live, but work does seem to be really progressing on that. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we see it go live uh, in the next month or two, and we'll keep you posted. We've also seen some more commits to the ski do uh, branch, which is that kind of solo water propulsion, propulsion vehicle. And uh, basically, that's it was about ready to go live the other month, and it, like the textures were there, and everything seemed to be there, but I don't think it was uh, being controlled exactly how they wanted to. And I also think they realized 
on the horizon, we've got some more stuff coming in for water activities like the dive sites and things like that coming with the world update. So my sense is that ski do vehicle will come probably in October with the world update. They're also doing some improvements to horse hitching and various other horse things. So we've seen this month, uh, just this week, it's horse, horse hitching, but we've also seen some changes to horse physics and everything like that. So hopefully horses are just operating on the terrain and uh, in a little more logical and easier fashion and just behaving better overall come the September update. They're also doing some more improvements on train decoupling just because that wasn't really working the way they wanted it to. So we've seen some commits earlier this month and continuing this week on just improvements to train decoupling. We also saw some more work this week on snakes, including a new blue viper. And this looks like it's going to be part of the jungle ruins monument and maybe even a jungle biome. And in that realm, we've seen, you know, a couple new animals, including these snakes and a blue viper and also crocodiles are apparently going to be coming with the jungle ruins monument slash uh, potentially even its own biome. Now, I don't think that's going to be coming for October. I believe that this monument is going to take probably a little bit longer. So maybe end of this year, beginning of next year, we'll see the jungle stuff come in. But I've yet to see it be part of the world update body of work. So I think we're going to have to wait a little bit longer before we see all that jungle cool stuff come in. But it'll be great to see not only a new biome and a completely new vibe section of the map, but also some new adversarial animals like this blue viper and the crocodiles. And then wrapping up, we've got some more work on player rig updates and elevator parenting. So like being able to get bikes on elevators and have them work properly. And then also we're seeing yet more work on the Frontier Hazmat Suit DLC, which is going to be like based on what we're seeing in line with the other hazmat DLCs we've seen in the past, where it'll be a hazmat and then some tools and then a high caliber revolver also seems to be uh, on the or in the cards, so to speak, for that Frontier Hazmat suit DLC. No word on when that's going to go live yet, but I'm thinking if not September, probably October. It seems like they're getting pretty close to being ready to go with that upcoming DLC. So we will, as always, keep you posted. And yeah, that about does it for what's going on in Rust development this week. Uh, Miss D, do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah, we do have some. Um, first off, I think a few people was asking if you could put wallpapers on the outside. Um, and I tried to build. And no. Yeah. You can do it on the soft side and you can you know, put it on and then just turn the wall, um, rotate the wall. I made a building behind here, uh, Artemis behind. Oh, beautiful. You can see. If you want to show. But yeah, the uh, wallpaper. Obviously, why, why would you put the soft side out, you know, unless it's like a real role player yeah. server or something. But yeah, rotate the walls, then you can, but only on one side. But yeah, it is just a wallpaper on soft side only. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Is it possible? Hold on, we just took that. How can one tell if it's a stone or middle wall with those wallpapers? Well, you can uh, take the well, side. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Just go outside and look. Yeah, you can see health on it too. You know, with your hammer. Yeah. Or something. Um. Let me see. Mm -mm. Do we have an update on the weapon skin for SAR, the SKS? Yeah, I'm not sure that's making it in. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure I heard Shadowfrax say he talked to the devs and um, and maybe they weren't going to add it in. I don't know if it was something like it doesn't fit the vibe of the game, but if that is the case, that makes absolutely no sense to me because we've got, I mean, we've got so many various different like 
guided rocket launchers and shit. So like um, an SKS rifle and skins. is just another it's just another weapon. So, but, um, and not sure if that's going to be, uh, originally it was going to be part of a DLC, one of the old hazmat DLCs and a skin of the SAR. But then there were some words that it might be its own standalone gun, but then we haven't really seen anything on it. So I'm really not sure if that's in concept limbo, if they just scrapped it entirely or we'll see it at some point in the future. Mm -mm -mm. Is this uh, coming in on the next patch? Yeah, uh, the uh, a lot of what we're seeing here is coming in on the next patch uh, on September 5th, so two weeks from today. Specifically, it looks like the, the wallpaper stuff is coming in and the digital clock is coming in and a bunch of various fixes and some quality of life stuff as well as the main things that we're seeing so far for the September update. I just saw Kenny ask, does it rotate with the wall? And yes, it does. So you can spray it and then yeah. you can rotate it. Yeah. Also, uh, I don't know if you saw there as well, just to add, um, with a flame for it. Yeah. And they're, the wallpaper is really easy to destroy. So you can, it's like six hitch, hits from a hatchet and it'll be destroyed as well. So it's, it's really just for decoration purposes and it doesn't uh protect the wall further when you're like smacking the wallpaper you are damaging the wall too so it doesn't add any extra protection for rating or anything like that it is literally just uh for aesthetics um, mm, mm, mm. where was it was there talk about turtles being added to the game i'm trying to think um I don't think I, I've heard. Maybe I don't think I I've have. seen turtles. Like, there's a couple new animals being worked on, uh, mainly this the snakes and the crocodiles. I mean, I think turtles could make sense. Also, I saw someone ask, uh, "Do we know what you'll harvest from, like a crocodile or a snake?" And I, I imagine just similar, like some meat and some cloth and maybe some bones. But it's all still very much Neither. in the no. development phase. So, so wasn't you talking and, about and yeah, leather, yeah. Sorry, Max. Yeah, he was talking about the possibility of, of poisoning as well. So maybe that's got something to do with the vipers. Yeah, uh, definitely. And it, speaking of poisoning, the other thing being worked on, and now I don't think it's coming in the September update, but is the blow dart uh, weapon, which is going to be a more primitive silent weapon that utilizes uh, bones for darts. But then also in the commits, there was some talk about uh, poison darts, so a dart that would limit vision or obscure vision, and then also a dart that would slow down players. And so it looks like we may have some poison darts. And wouldn't it be interesting if you need to like go find a snake and extract the poison, and then that's what you use to make a poison dart. So that is purely just hypothetical, but that could be a direction we're heading here in the next several months. Yeah. Um, someone's asking, can you stack it? A wallpaper? I don't think so. No, you can I only apply no. one. Yep. Mm. I mean, if anyone else have questions, do at Miss D underscore that's me so I see the questions better. Thank you. Yeah. And also, we are going to make this a short one today because I am uh, traveling and I've got an appointment in the near future. But I do also want to say Charitable Rust is coming up October 12th. Mark your calendars. It's a Saturday, one of the first Saturdays in October. And it's going to be just an awesome event. We're going to have Twitch drops, skins on the item store, the proceeds of which go towards the amazing cause, which we are supporting Direct Relief this year. This is the second time we're supporting them. They're an incredible organization, non for profit that brings aid to people in conflict zones around the world. And given the unfortunate state of all the conflict in the world, we thought that would be a very worthwhile cause to support. And uh, we're going to have a 2X vanilla server with a bunch of games, parkour, art contests, talent show, a bunch of different prizes and everything. It's going to be a 12-hour live stream on October 12th. 
starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. So mark your calendars. It's going to be a great time, some twitch drops and everything. And we'll have more information uh, coming out in the very near future about that. Also, once again, a huge thank you to all the skin creators who helped uh, and participated in the skin contest for Charitable this year. We have some finalists. We're still working with Face Punch to get clear exactly what skins we're going to use. And so, um, sorry there hasn't been any like official announcements for who the contest winners officially are yet, but we are working on that and we expect by sometime in September to have more information on that and get those prizes out to everybody. But again, thank you so much to all the skin creators who participated. We had some really incredible submissions and it's really hard to pick just because we're limited in how many we can choose. And it was harder this year than any other year because we just had so many amazing and quality submissions. So much love and thank you to you all. How do you learn how to program servers? Um, that's a good question. I kind of just, I, I started a legacy server back when there were already like thousands of legacy servers. And so I followed just a tutorial on that. But then the literally the day Gary released the experimental branch uh, server code, I spawned an AWS instance up and got a server up and Rustified was one of the first 10 servers to be running experimental. And it all really kind of went from there, but we did actually create a guide on rustify.com that runs through how to host your own Rust server. And there's a bunch of great information online for building mods and stuff like that. And also if you want to, if you're like more interested in coding mods, get with AI because that stuff will code for you. And it does a surprisingly good job with uh, a lot of things in that nature. So you can just have a conversation with AI these days and learn a whole lot and have it even code things for you. So I highly recommend it. Nice. Um, I think we just do a little recap, recap. Yeah, let's recap it cap here. So again, we're on the staging branch. It is a five Thursday month. And so the servers wiping today are the weekly Thursday wipe servers for Rustified. And then next week, it will be the weekly and bi-weekly Thursday wipe servers wiping. And the bi-weeklies will just have a one-week wipe cycle between next week and the September 5th update and forced wipe. But we're over here on the staging branch, and what we're seeing is a bunch more wallpaper get added. We saw the initial stages of wallpaper last week, and this week we've seen a whole bunch more types of wallpaper, including some glowing ones and some really cool patterns and everything like that. And the wallpaper is really easy to craft. It's a default blueprint, 20 cloth, and it just goes on the inside soft side of walls. And it's just going to be really a game changer for base decoration and just creating whatever vibes you want inside your base. So not all of these, I think, are going to be available for everyone to use by default. They've opened it up for testing on staging, but I believe either this is going to be like a DLC or maybe individual items available for purchase on the item store, but we'll keep you posted. And and yeah, there's even some glowing wallpaper, which is really cool. And uh, just, yeah, really awesome stuff. The wallpaper, again, it's 20 cloth and it doesn't protect the wall extra, so it's not going to give you extra raid protection or anything like that but it is a really cool new feature and really looks awesome. There's also digital clocks being worked on. Um, if you were here last week, you probably heard everything. It's a digital clock that shows in 24 hour time, the in-game server time, and you can add up to five alarms. It requires one electricity and then there is a power pass through. So when an alarm goes off, you can have it actually like turn on electrical items and things like that and it's got an alarm noise and everything like that so digital clocks do look like they're coming in for the september 5th update it's a level two like tier two workbench item and 100 metal fa frags to craft at the moment we're also seeing a whole bunch of cool stuff with wolf ai now i don't think this is going to come for the september update but really seeing a bunch of overhauls to the behavior of wolves including glowing eyes at night and howls and more natural hunting behaviors where they'll circle prey and if you like 
if you sneak up on a wolf and attack it, it'll run away and retreat and then howl to summon its pack and then come back for a coordinated attack. So really just some interesting behavioral shifts to wolves coming in the near future. Again, I don't think September, but maybe for the world update in October, we'll see that. Now, also speaking of the world update over on Aux2, a ton of crazy stuff is happening on procedural map generation. And really what we're seeing is the biggest change to procedural map generation that we've seen in literally years. They're adding canyons and lakes and oases and uh, the new Radtown Redux Monument. There's radioactive water. There's uh, ocean wreck buoys and dive sites that are being added to make the like exploration of water more interesting and dynamic. And also this week, what we're seeing as well is the initial work on river systems. And so we're seeing rivers get added to the map and flow through the island. And on top of just the coolness of having a river, they also are working on like a current system for the river. So if you have a kayak or something like that, then you'll be able to travel quickly down the river in the kayak or in the boogie board, utilizing the current of the river. So really excited about that. That all is expected to come in October. So not many visuals. You can see rustify.com. I have a couple maps that were uh, courtesy of Shelby. He's a QA guy, awesome guy. Uh, who does QA for Face Punch, and he posted some like in-game maps so you can get a sense of what this stuff is looking like, but no real visuals yet. I imagine as we get into September, then we'll be able to uh, test this out and show you guys everything. Either they're going to open up Aux 2 for everyone to play with, or they'll just merge the Aux 2 stuff into normal staging, but really excited about that stuff. And then in the realm of other stuff, there's a bunch of miscellaneous fixes. I'm not going to go through all the details. You can check out rustified.com for the details of that. There's a fire extinguisher being worked on as well. The blunderbuster is that new weapon, that new shotgun being worked on. No word on when that's going to be coming in. And we've seen work continue on the ski do vehicle. That's the solo player uh, kind of water above and underwater propulsion uh, tool, which will likely, I'm thinking, come with the world update stuff, just given the world update is going to have new dive sites and new things to explore in the water. So it would make a lot of sense that the ski do, you know, comes with that. And then we're also seeing a bunch of fixes for horses this, uh, this month. So they're working on horse hitching, but we've also seen some improvements to horse physics and things like that. So hopefully riding horses will be just a lot more natural feeling and better come the September update. And yeah, that about does it for the recap decap here. And I'm going to wind this puppy down. But if we have like one more question, I could field it, Misty. We do have a few, but I also think we should make it clear for people who might have the same, I don't know, what <laughs> I'm going to try to say it. You know, the guy that was thinking he got banned on Rustified because he got a team kill ban in PUBG. And that's why he got banned on Rustified. Yeah, yeah. I, that, I have no idea what you're talking about there. But we don't no. we don't look at yeah. what you're doing in another game and ban you for no. team Red killing in PUBG. Not, now, yeah. if you do get... If you do get game banned in another game for hacking, then yes, you will get banned on Rustified servers. And you can check out our rules for that, rustified.com slash rules for all the details on why you were banned. But quite frankly, if you're banned, just go to forum.rustified.com and sign in, fill out a ban appeal ticket. You can also find that information on rustified.com slash discord. Go to our discord and look up appeal a ban. And yeah, just fill out a ticket and appeal your ban if you're banned but i uh, you didn't get it from team killing people in PUBG. that's i have no idea where that idea would come from but i yeah. can guarantee you that's not why you were banned yeah i just wanted to make that clear so that people don't think yeah. that's how we do it yeah yeah um, that is not <laughs> how we do it here yeah does the glowing wallpaper give you a decent light at night 
Um, it's not like super illuminating really, but it does allow you to see it. And so if you had like a hallway with the glowing wallpaper, you'd definitely know where the edges of the wall are and stuff. But it's not really, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not really like blasting off a ton of illumination at all. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, have you heard anything about Molotovs being not being reliable in raids? Um, that's not something I've heard any news about. I'm not aware of any glitches or bugs going on with Molotovs at the moment, but uh, it is very possible. And uh, as always, if you're experiencing something weird with the game, you think there's a bug or an issue with the game, just hit F7 while you're in a server and report it to the devs because they actually do a great job of reviewing those F7 reports and all that stuff. And every month, we're like we don't go a month, much less a week, without seeing some form of bug fix and all that stuff. And that really does all uh, come from feedback from the community. So just F7, report that stuff to the devs. And if it is an issue, then I'm sure they will fix it. Does the wallpaper break before the wall, or does it stay in place until the wall breaks when it's being raided? Uh, no, it breaks pretty quick. So like six hatchet hits, or like a second with the flamethrower, and the wall's getting, uh, or the wallpaper's getting destroyed. Now, if the person's coming in from the outside, it might break at the same time. But again, the wallpaper has no extra protection for raids. If you smack a piece of wallpaper, the wallpaper will get destroyed, but it's also damaging the wall as you're doing it. So uh, there's absolutely no extra protection provided by the wallpaper. It is purely aesthetic. Is there any major changes to this wipe? Um, well, the main thing we're seeing is the, you know, wallpaper coming in and the digital clock and some miscellaneous other fixes and quality of life. And we still do have two weeks until the September 5th update and four swipe. So there very well could be some other things coming in. And then looking forward to October, there's the world update uh, stuff coming in, which is a complete overhaul to the procedural map generation, the addition of a bunch of new cool elements, new monuments, new dive sites, uh, new cliffs, lakes, rivers, oases, canyons. I mean, it's really incredible what's coming in October. But yeah, for September, it looks like we're seeing a couple new items potentially and um, maybe a new DLC going live. But we still have two weeks to go, so we'll keep you posted as always on what you can expect for the September update. Okay, I think that's it for this week. All right, awesome. Well, Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And um, yeah, thank you, Misty and Artemis, for being my co-MCs as always. You're welcome, as always. Yep, you are welcome. And yeah, a lot of people think we're the developers of the game or something like that. And the fact of the matter is we're not. We're an independent organization who loves reporting on development news and running the best servers that we can. And so I just want to take a moment and acknowledge our audience and everyone who supports us because literally we would not be able to, to do this without you. We've been doing this now for over 10 years and we grew from one server with 40 people to now we have almost 40 servers with thousands of people. And the only way we can do that is through the support of the community. So to everyone who tunes in and watches, to people who give bits and subscribe on Twitch and to our wonderful, beautiful, loyal VIP customers, thank you all so very much for the support because again, we wouldn't be able to do this without you. So much love to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will be back same time, same place next week to give you all the update development news and let you know what's coming in September 5th. And in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week and a wonderful wipe. This is Bugs signing off.